Hello, my name is Jamie Weston, I'm director of Foxtrap. I'm Derek Wilson Reed and I'm Anna in Foxtrap. And I'm Kate Greer and I'm playing um, Connie. For me, it was the people. I've seen their work before and it was amazing. And um, I know them to be really passionate about what they do. And it was because of that reason that I was really excited to get involved in the project. Well, I get, well for me, it's, um, I, I mean, horror is, is, you know, a crazy genre. And I think it's one of those genres that a lot of people say, oh, we don't have a massive budget and it's an indie film, let's make a horror, it will be easy. But I truly believe that um, from an acting point of view, and I think for, for everyone really, horror is quite difficult. Um, to be scared for your life for yeah. three weeks straight um, is really hard. And, you know, all the special effects and the, the blood and the gore and all the makeup and getting the right, you know, the lighting and camera angles and all of that is, is really hard. So when you're able to be involved in a horror movie, um, I think take it because it's a very challenging role. And I think other roles after that for me personally, hopefully um, won't be as challenging. Yeah. Yeah. You do go through emotional roller coaster. So you're constantly going on set and you're going from, you know, speaking to people, getting to know people to suddenly being in a really terrifying experience or you're doing things that you would hope no one would have to do. Um, I think it's, it is really difficult, but I think we were really lucky in this one that we had such a great team and everyone, you know, on and off set was mm. just amazing to work with. Mm, and supportive yeah, yeah really supportive and let you kind of get where you needed to be and understood yeah especially you yeah <laughs> our director over here yeah. it was great yeah. <laughs> we're very lucky thanks guys <laughs> um, well I've known Scott who's producer and plays Jamie for a number of years and he uh, performed in one of my previous films uh, last year um, so he just got in touch with me and just said you know I've got this film coming out uh, would you be interested in directing it? I sent the script over. I thought, yeah, sounds cool. Okay. Um, I was in the middle of like 10 other projects at the time and suddenly, next thing I know, he just said, yeah, I'd love to have him on board. And then half a month later, <laughs> I landed here and uh, just gave it a go. So. You did a good job. Thank you. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I mean, for me, it wasn't just, I mean, I've avoided doing features for a while uh, for the, for the, the sheer fact that you get you know low budget independent features can all, all, always be a bit naff and so I thought you know what I'd really like to do is, is get some and ask some talented people to come on board and I saw that there was loads of talented actors involved and had a really good location and some good kit so I thought you know it's a real opportunity to actually get some passionate filmmakers to make a film that isn't only you know maybe a low independent British horror film but actually something that could stand up against high budget high value sort of serious drama mm. and uh, look as good that's some really good uh, quality stuff in it which I think we've, which I think we've achieved you know, yeah 100% I'm really pleased with so I got into the uh, industry originally um, when I was much younger I uh, got into acting I was acting from the age of 15 right up to about 24 and um, what I realised was that Actually, what I really had is all these ideas in my head that I wanted to create and that maybe I should direct. But directing theatre was obviously very hard and very difficult very expensive as you can't just direct a play, you need rehearsal space, which and it takes off to a month and then you perform it in the space that often costs a lot of money. And then if only 30 people turn up for like the three days you perform it, then ultimately you've spent a month and you know, 30, 40 people have seen it and then that's it, it's over. Um, so for me, a friend of mine was uh, getting into filming and just was making his own little films. I started one and just thought, yeah, it seems like a better way to do it. I can put all my ideas out there and if only 30 people see it on one day, at least I've got it for the rest of my life to show other people. <laughs> and it just evolved from there, really. And that's really sort of, I guess, how it started. Mm. And uh, yeah, and about six years later, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did it full time. It was kind of like a roundabout route. So when... I don't think I really decided that I wanted to do acting until I was maybe about um, 17. Like, it was always something that I wanted to do, but I was never like, this is going to be my profession. Um, until it was probably in my A-levels that I decided, actually, this is, 
this is something that I really want to pursue. And then I got into a Wada Foundation course and I trained there and what I was given there was amazing, amazing teaching that I could take on into every job that I've worked in. And then I went to um, the University of Exeter and I studied drama there. Um, and that was really great at um, doing our own plays and being in a massive group of people who were creative kind of all over the industry and um, producing just everything ourselves. And then um, I came out and it just kind of really started from scratch. Um, just you know, doing constant auditioning, constant hard work, constant classes, just trying to really stretch myself to be the best I could be. And um, but this is like my debut feature film, so this is this is my defining moment. <laughs> right here, right here, yeah. and we're here for it. Yeah. Yay, go team! <laughs> Therapy is amazing at acting. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Um, well, I, ha- I think what has been incredible is that I, and I can't stress this enough, and I know I say it, but everyone said that um, I've had such an amazing group of people to work with mm. um, who have really helped me out on just really small things like finding the light and like mm. angles and things that because I was based and trained in theatre I wasn't really aware of so much. Um, and I've had that really amazing support system and just some of the scenes that I've done have been really challenging um, and have really pushed me as an actor and hopefully I've succeeded in them and hopefully people who watch film will like them but um, I had some incredible people behind me who really helped me with those scenes whether they were the actor who was literally lying on my lap or you know just having the eye contact or getting the feedback so mm-hmm. it really has been amazing and I've learned so much. I'm probably the same as Therica really. I don't have a particular moment or a job that um, catapulted me and made me think this is what I want to do forever. It kind of just um, started to happen and you know I'm from Australia so I don't know if it works differently here but I was getting sent by my agent to a lot of castings, a lot of TV commercial castings and stuff like that and I was booking bits and pieces and landing commercials you know really cheesy ones and talking about supermarkets and stuff like that and I was like well this is kind of fun Um, and then I thought I wanted to take it more seriously and actually study and get a backbone to it and be able to take on all different types of roles so um, since then I've kind of been booking things along the way and, and I guess I just keep falling more and more in love with it so um, it's definitely a gradual thing uh, for me and it's been so exciting being able to play the role of Connie because she's she's so strong and opinionated and it's not really the type of character that I get booked for a lot so it's been amazing to live the life of, of Connie that's for sure. These two are actually incredibly talented and unbelievably hardworking though. Like both of you, like you can see it. Like when you talk to them, there's so much dedication. There's so much they're constantly going. They never, ever, ever stop. Um, which is kind of why I think it's gonna go far. <laughs> <laughs> this is like our own little pep talk we're having yeah. here. No, you're amazing. No, you're amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> we'll see you in the sequel. <laughs> So my role in the film was a uh, director and on this particular project what that meant was taking the script on board and also taking on board uh, what the producers wanted to create for for the story because um, as a project that's um, going to certain film festivals and straight to DVD we have to fill certain criteria but also we have to make, um, make something that's going to uh, fit and please the fans of this horror genre. So it was about understanding, understanding how to create, um, create the story, and also like pose it to the sort of fans if the people are going to like it. So I, I started by doing lots of research and looking back at um, like the eighties horror films and looking back at the sort of film stock they used to look, um, sort of lights they used to use, uh, sort of practical effects they used to use. So in order to create a sort of an, as much as I could an authentic traditional 80 slash film in 2016 with modern equipment on a budget and um, 
and then obviously put my own artistic sort of style onto it and um, hope in a way that I can sort of try and bring a sort of more expensive Hollywood look into something that may be, um, you know, not a million, multi-million pounds, you know, John Carpenter film or something like that, you know, we were working with you know, limited amount of cash and, you know, it was a challenge and it was, it was fun and it was improvisation and it was just, you know, thinking on the fly and just trying to, <laughs> trying to really sort of draw out the best <laughs> moments. Um, obviously, you know, as well as that, uh, directing is mainly really just working with the actors and just like blocking out the scenes um, with a project like this and there's like so much to shoot in such a small amount of time. Um, I, I specifically asked uh, the director Bea, uh, Beatrice to shoot it because mm. um, I've met before and we'd spoken and we'd had a similar sort of artistic sort of style and interest yeah. in sort of art house cinema and European style of cinema so I knew that I could sort of say to her I need this in shot and without really explaining like really loads of details and giving her loads of storyboards and stuff she instantly understood mm. what sort of what sort of style I meant and what I wanted and that's exactly why I wanted her on board to begin with because we both share a similar sort of love of uh, cinema um, you know and also it's just um, for me it's about experimenting it's like mm, you know let's try something different let's just mm. see how what the actors want to do and not limit them to doing exactly what I think is right I'd prefer just to see if the actors have got really good ideas and um, go with what they want to do and maybe if they come up with something that I haven't thought of then I'll say great let's shoot let's re we I like, think this plan of shooting yeah. it and, and try and capture mm. what they've done which I think is far more interesting than you know what I thought of just and that and that happens it. all the time we came up with really good ideas yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> this, this was a really consistent thing you see <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding no, <laughs> no but you know there's some what it is I mean you know you're reading a play or you're reading the script and they're not meant to be read they're meant to be watched or they're meant to be seen yeah. mm. and it's very hard sometimes to sit up in, at, in your own bedroom or in your own office and read a two hour film that includes 12 different characters and loads yeah. of locations and just suddenly have you know like 500 different individual shots and ideas of how you're going to direct all these individual people and all their thoughts I've got a rough idea and I'm going to plan as much as I can but let's just get there and see what they, yeah. see how they do it and maybe they you know I can work around it mm. I think everyone like really had a quite a strong idea of their character which really helped Ooh. as well everyone came to the table with like a lot yeah. of ideas of how they would want to play scenes and stuff which I think probably helped yeah. you out in some way oh definitely and mm. it's you know it's one of the things where this you know this is a this is a very collaborative project this yeah. is a project where we're all coming on board to make something together to end up with a really awesome end project. So for me, it's not really a project where I want to say, no, actually, I've completely thought that your character was completely wrong. And like, this is my own, you know, pictorial vision of how I believe your character should be. I would like to say, no, actually, yeah, you want to play your character like that? And, you know, obviously, sometimes I think maybe you're right or wrong, but ultimately, I'll try and collaborate with the actors and, and you know, yeah. and try and make what their vision of how they should be played work and, and shoot around what they want to do and you know it really helps actually you know when you've got really really good actors who are completely on it <laughs> like you guys were really really <laughs> on it and really 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 good so for me it was more like I'd rather step back a bit and actually try and capture what they're doing in a really interesting way rather than say this is how they should do it because what they were doing was far beyond sometimes even things that I would have, like come up with. So I'm Anna in the film and Anna has had a really difficult time. She um, was kind of like the outsider in this group um, and she never really fit in. Um, and she makes a really strong bond with a girl called Frankie. And through this one incident, um, I don't want to give too much away, but through this one incident, that's kind of blown apart. And she ends up with really no one in her life. And her parents are separated and her mum has MS. And she slowly watches her mum decline. And from what's been a really proud woman, she kind of ends up having to really look after her mum. Um, and so when she enters the film, she, she is very depressed. She's, she's very sad and she's very lonely. And she really feels that if she kind of makes right 
by Frankie, if she can kind of redeem herself, that maybe she'll kind of have a change of fate, you know, maybe things won't be so bad for her anymore. And, um, and it's kind of that that drives her onwards throughout the film, is that she's constantly trying to get Frankie's friendship back. She's constantly searching for forgiveness. Um, and she, she's not, even though she, even though she is sad and stuff, she does have a backbone. And you start to see it throughout more of the film. She starts standing up to Connie. She ends up doing some pretty horrific acts, um, which it, she needs a lot of strength for. Um, and she, I don't want to give too much away, so I'm not going to really go on, but... Um, you're kind of left really hopefully in her corner really fighting for her because she's been through so much and you think that you know, it's going to go <laughs> well for her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I am playing Connie and I think people watching this might not like Connie very much. <laughs> she comes across quite um, opinionated and um, bitchy. Maybe she's feisty. She's she's got she's, feisty. she's got fight. She's definitely a fighter. She's got a lot of spunk. Yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think she is really cool and she's really honest. And personally, I think Connie's the type of person that just says what she thinks and there's no bullshit. If she says she's going to do something, she'll do it. Um, if she promises something, she will keep that promise. And she is really upset when people break promises that have been made to her. So, um, I don't think that she's a intentionally cruel person, but I think she's aware that if she says something and it hurts someone, that there will obviously be repercussions for that. She's not too bothered about that. Um... But she's definitely a fighter when it comes to the fight or flight situation. Um, and I think also she's very vulnerable, even though, um, you know, it might not come across that way. She's been hurt and um, she's just trying really, A, to get her power back and B, to survive. So I really like Connie and I think she's a really special, fun character and... I, um, yeah, I really fell in love with her <laughs> throughout the shoot, so hopefully um, we won't get much hate mail for Connie. <laughs> Kate herself is the complete opposite <laughs> of Connie, which is hilarious because Kate is literally like the loveliest, mm. the nicest girl to work Aww. with. Um, she's absolutely amazing. <laughs> Um, she's just so lovely and then you get into a scene with her and you're like oh my god <laughs> who is this and I she's throwing you daggers like, across the room and you're like oh my god but um, yeah so she but had to keep saying I'm not like this I'm really not like I'm this, not a I'm bitch not, but I think it's, it's, you know I think within this film there's also that underlying um, bullying kind of thing that happens you know in most schools so um yeah, I do kind of want to make that aware that I don't think being nasty to people is the way to get what you want. But um, I think she's just speaking the truth. But, uh, you know, I hope that this doesn't turn out to be like a bullied kind of situation because I think, um, yeah, I don't think that's the way to, to get what you want in life. That's for sure. I think like in the heart of it, it's kind of, especially at the beginning, it's about kind of school kids, you know, children who, um, especially Connie, she's put into a situation and she really just doesn't know how to deal with it. Yeah, so it's she, just a quick, quick so, decision, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so she kind of, you know, she does something that she kind of really shouldn't have. You know, they play this prank. Instead of, you know, doing the more mature, the adult thing of talking about it and mm. kind of expressing your feelings, she kind of does this kind of attacking thing. And the others are just so kind of in awe of Connie and in awe of her power that she just, you know, they just, they just follow her. Um, and I think that in this film you see their realisation that they can't just follow people, yeah. that they can't do that, that they have to make these decisions for themselves and they have to follow through with their decisions. Mm, and consequences. Yeah, and consequences. Mm. 
<laughs> well, no please, no please, no, no please, no please. <laughs> Um, there's been hundreds. Oh, dear. There's yeah. been so many oh inside jokes. Yeah. So many, so, so many. many funny moments. So many. Yeah. A so, lot of yeah. like the most memorable things for me have actually just been like sitting around because obviously we were shooting night shoot, so we'd start at fu- well we start at four, didn't we? Four originally, four. and then we'd, we'd be in makeup yeah. at three, and like even sometimes before that, and towards the um, later on when it was starting to get um, darker later we'd start at five and finish at five so a lot of our time spent <laughs> together was kind of just like lying around each other's rooms like sloths kind of. <laughs> um but there was loads of inside jokes um mm. just loads a lot of banter the, the genres i, I like and, and if, if horror is my preferred genre is um yes and no uh, there's a lot of horrors i do like uh, a lot of 80s original things like Hellraiser, like John Carpenter's films like The Thing, um, and like Nightmare on Elm Street Love and Friday the 13th. Um, but I, I also am a big lover of serious drama and um, and I, I think that a lot of serious drama has really sort of scary scary moments and, and that, like the way I approach this is looking at this as like a drama and not like I'm making a horror film so that was real and we're not making something that's meant yeah. to look scary or sound scary or, mm. have, or like sort of appear to be scary it's scary because these were real people put in a, in a position that where they were in serious threat and hopefully that that will create a more scary film yeah yeah um, for me i take after my dad my dad introduced me to um a film called let the right one in it's a horror but um it's beautifully shot and it's um, gory but not it's not too much but I just found it just such an elegant horror film my dad introduced me to the original so yeah that's the one um, and yeah and he's really interested in films like that he loves um, kind of French films and that kind of stuff so that for me is like my favourite horror film um, I think horror is a really difficult one because um, and I think Kate will repeat um, you're going into situation, and I've repeated in this interview, like, you're going into situations where you're scared for your life. You're honestly fearing someone, um, or you're in a situation which is just horrific. You're seeing, like, a dead person, or you're seeing someone who's, like, mortally wounded. Um, and reaching that kind of level of fear, and not just doing it once, but doing it multiple times in different takes, from different angles... Um, that has definitely been kind of a challenge um, and also just a letting your imagination kind of run free because obviously with, they've done amazing makeup on, on this film um, especially with a low budget but you also have to just allow your imagination to go to a place and to, you know, when you're seeing someone on the floor to really imagine that they're just not there anymore 